All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I'm going to pick on these guys just a little bit. Um, but before I do that, I want to uh, real quickly, um, you know, I guess make a point that Satan is not God, is not a God, is no God at all. And it's against the Ten Commandments. It's a <laughs> it's against the very first commandment that God gives in the Ten Commandments to suggest that Satan is God. If the Bible said Satan was a God, the Bible would be wrong because it goes back. It goes against the first. Of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So, it. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing saying. What are you doing saying Satan is a god? It, Satan is not a god at all. There's something wrong with your heart. I mean that. There's something wrong with your heart when you suggest Satan is a god. It's unbelievable. Um, so, I don't get it. I really don't. I can't comprehend. I can't relate to people that's like saying Satan and Jesus are brothers you're preaching teaching a whole nother religion outside of the Bible uh, you're not even close now there's a problem and I, I get it man there's a problem with something that people are reading in the Bible Thou believest that thou or er, that I'm sorry, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. There is one God. There's only one God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one God. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Well, how's come the devils don't believe Satan as God? They because Satan is not a god. You think about that. All right. So the problem is Second uh, Corinthians four verse four, in whom the God of this world has blinded. The minds of them which believe not. All right, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Why is there a small g? I don't know. I don't know why there's a small g there. There shouldn't be. Unless uh, somebody evil did that. I mean, that's the only thing I, I can think of. The heart is this, uh, deceitfully wicked. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Okay, so maybe there's some of that going on. And I had a conversation. A couple people told me, well, I, I said, look, man, the 1611 has the capital G, if that matters to you, you know? And they're like, no, it doesn't. Why are you lying? Well, I'm not going to argue about this. Because it's not a standalone verse this is 
this teaching is all throughout the Bible. It's not a one-time deal like what you're claiming. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. And you got to see it for yourself. Right there it is. Let me see if I can get it larger. Right, in whom the God of this world. Let me go super large on this so you, there's no doubt. In whom the God. Can you see that? It's a capital G. It is. Capital G. So what's the issue here? You want to make Satan out to be a god just like the Mormons do? I mean, they're saying if, <laughs> if Jesus and Satan are brothers and Jesus is God, then Satan must be God also. This is comic book stuff. Really. Now, you'll also notice gospel. The word gospel, okay? Why is the gospel of Christ not cop capitalized? I don't know. I don't know. Um, quite frankly, I, th I think you're making too big of a deal out of this. Um, that, you know, the small g, and, say, and changing your whole... And, entire doctrine and making the Bible out to be untrue and contradictory. So, if you just consider this, man. Isaiah 6, Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. We're going we're gonna to read that at least, uh, what is it, three times? That exact uh, prophecy, that exact scripture uh, throughout the Bible. This is not, hey Satan, make the heart of the people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. That's not, it's not Satan, man. In Exodus, we read this whole story of. Uh, you know the the people in bondage and Moses going to the Pharaoh and saying hey let my people go and God hardened his heart the Pharaoh's heart it wasn't Satan hardening his heart it was God I will harden his heart unless you think the Lord is Satan and this is what I mean, man. There's something wrong with your heart. If you think Satan is a god, there's something seriously wrong with your heart. And being ignorant of the scripture is one thing. But to claim Satan is God, is a god, I mean, what, you got God, and then you got Satan, you know, you got the God of heaven, and then you got Satan here. I mean, I wonder, are these same people claiming Jesus is not God? I just wonder. Wouldn't that be interesting? Say Satan is God, but Jesus ain't. Or maybe they've evolved from that and say, well, the scripture is pretty clear. Jesus is God. So we'll just make Satan God, too. And what are you doing? Don't you care about the truth at all? You're not going to find any scripture anywhere in the Bible that implies Satan is a god. And in fact, you got clear, plain scripture saying, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That means there's only one God. Because there's only one God. It's not Satan. Alright, so let's pick on these guys a little bit. 
Um, yeah, I tell you what, let's go from the beginning to just so you get a sense of how ridiculous these guys are. Okay? Hey, they don't care about the Bible, they don't believe in any Bible, and they hate the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll show you. Red flag, yeah. Welcome back to our, our humble abode. Yeah, to our kitchen here, our dining room. Yeah. Uh, and and red flag is obviously shalom. Okay. That's a red flag right there, boys. Red flag. Shalom. Not found in the Bible. Why you. Oh, well, it makes you look religious, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it makes you look religious. <laughs> religious. It makes you look ridiculous is what, what it does. Uh, how do, you know, there's a couple of, oops. Okay. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. That's Titus 1 verse 10. Many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Who's the circumcision? This is not talking about people that have been circumcised. This is talking about you know who. Right? I mean, surely you know, right? I mean, you know this it's pretty it's pretty simple stuff man you don't need to be a bible scholar to know this stuff here really <laughs> who both killed the lord jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not god and are contrary to all men shalom shalom huh Shalom, salami, salami. I'm not a big fan of salami. In case you're wondering, I'm not a big fan of shalom or salami. Neither one, really. Revelation 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, shalom, and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee see we're gonna be up in the air with the Lord at the end of the world they're gonna be at our feet they are gonna be at our feet I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. They're going to know. God's going to make it known to them that God loves us. Shalom. How's that for sh some shalami, huh? Oh, I mean, what are, you, what are you fooling somebody? You think you got... Uh, some pretty good skill at deceiving people. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Well, who's the concision? <laughs> you should know who they are. They are liars and deceivers. All right, let's listen. That's where we spend Shabbat. It's not Shabbat today, uh, but we, uh, we've had kind of busy Sabbaths. Right? Yeah. So, uh, so Bu busy Sabbaths. Oh, there's a there's a Sabbath keeper, huh? There's a Sabbath keeper. <laughs> oh my goodness. John five verse eighteen. Therefore, the Jews sought the more, the Jews sought the more to kill him, Jesus. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath. Ooh. 
eight-year-old. I guess Jesus wasn't a Sabbath keeper, huh? <laughs> I mean, surely you know John 5, right? It's the fifth chapter in the book of John. If you don't know that, buddy, start reading your Bible. So we really haven't had a chance to, you know, talk about it or record ourselves or anything like that. So uh, we thought we would, uh, you know, do a little video. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, this is something that's kind of been, like, on our hearts lately. Um, and uh, you want to get right to it? Let's, talk about let's jump right in now. Okay, so it's been something that's been on our hearts lately because we have done a lot of videos on the Millennial Kingdom, the Millennial Reign of Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, the Thousand Year Reign, uh, as prophesied. Yeshua HaMashiach, that means, that's code for, a, I hate the Lord Jesus Christ, so I'm going to use a different name. I hate the Lord Jesus Christ, so I'm going to use the name Yeshua Hamashalakulai, the word I can't even say. And, and <laughs> if that, you know, if that was the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, well, I'm in trouble because I can't even say that name. I mean, I'm in big trouble. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now is this Yeshua Shahamashalakiyaka? Or is it a different name? I mean, it's kind of a big deal. If there's only one name given among men, whereby we must be saved for there is none other name given I'm sorry there, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and this is it right here this is the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved what's interesting also to me is that they hate the letter J even though they're they're not smart enough to realize the importance of the letter J but they hate the letter J so they change the letter J to the letter Y because it sounds more Jewish makes them sound more ridiculous I mean religious and what's interesting I mean who are you talking about buddy you talking about Jesua the son of Nun <laughs> I mean really you there's another Jesua if I remember correctly Jeshua the son of Josadok is that who you're talking about or are you talking about uh, Jeshua, Jeshua the son of Nun? Yeshua the son of Nun? Or Yeshua the son of Yozhadak? Who are you talking about, man? You're not talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And when's the last time? Your kids did something you didn't like, and you yelled, Jesus Christ. Or, I'm sorry, when's the last time you that happened and you yelled, Yes, sir, well, you're my shaker waka? Oh, that sounds Japanese. Yeah, nobody gets upset and says, Yes, sir, well, may I'm I can't even say it, man. Boy, I'd get, I'd get double upset if I had to say that when I, when I was looking to you know express some frustration you know I mean come on man what is this and now you believe and he says we do believe we're in the short season uh post millennial reign and uh we've done some videos on that and we've had some convers uh, conversations with people and uh so something we kind of learned coming into this, there's, uh, okay, 
All right, so <laughs> no idea. How, how about rather than making videos, how about start reading the Bible? All right, because you don't want to be wrong, do you? Ephesians 4, verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive it's unbelievable man it's unbelievable you don't care about the truth you just listen to what other men say if you knew what the Bible would say maybe you wouldn't be so quick to listen to what the deceivers are saying You ought to know what the Bible says, man, first, first and foremost, and then line that up with what people say. Right? Yeah, I love this verse here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. We are of God. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error and you talk about the spirit of error boy oh boy we're not even a minute into this video and there's nothing but error and everything that they said is error I believe that uh, what's this uh, where was that out of here we're in a little season we're in a little season in the short season is what he called it okay the little season short season and that's in reference to Revelation 20 and I just wonder sometimes man is what's going on that's making all these people unable to see the simplicity of Revelation 20 shall I walk you through it it's real simple let's do it now in order to understand Revelation 20 it's really important to have read the very first chapter it really is consider this I mean this is laying it all out for us it really this will this should clarify a whole bunch of stuff the Revelation 1 verse 1 the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants that's us things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John alright so John is going to describe things that the angels are showing him and he is passing this information to us okay it's pretty simple angels are gonna show John things and John's gonna describe these things so Revelation 20 and I saw an angel I John saw an angel come down from heaven he's angels gonna show John something pay attention And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. That's where these fellas are getting a short season all right oh I think we're in a short season well it's ridiculous and it's as if you've never read Revelation 20 to make that sort of claim I mean that it's as if you have no idea what Revelation 20 says all your information comes from other men 
seriously. It, obviously, you don't believe what the plain scripture says. That's very clear to me. Now, I want you to understand what this means, so I'm going to tell you plainly. That in the Old Testament, there was one country, one nation of God. It was the children of Israel. Outside of that country, nation, circle of people, the people of Israel, were nations. Those nations were deceived by Satan. Alright, so Jesus comes along and he says to that group of people, the children of Israel, the, the nation of, uh, you know, uh, the, essentially what was considered the nation of God. Alright, and he says to them, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Alright, so when Jesus does this, then Satan is bound. He's tied up. He can no longer Excuse me. Ah, let's do it this way. He can no longer deceive the nations like he had was doing. Right? Let me go over that again in case you missed it. Jesus says, Unto them the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. In Exodus 19, he makes the children of Israel the children he makes the children of Israel a kingdom of priests and an holy nation all right so this is a group of people outside of that group of people were nations deceived by Satan all right What's the word I'm looking for? That's the word. Okay, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation of peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, who's the holy nation? We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We that are Christ. We are the holy nation. No longer is there one boundary of people. The kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pretty simple stuff, man, really. Pretty simple stuff. So when Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof, he's talking about Christians. True Christians, right? Those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the holy nation of God. Right? You see the parallels here, right? When, you know, we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. You go back to Exodus 19. I believe I was just in Rev uh, Exodus 20. Right? And you go back one chapter before and it talks all about this. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You go up one verse before that. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Above all people. So the children of Israel at that time were above all people therefore the people that were not the children of Israel they were just they were nations deceived by Satan this is not complicated it's amazing to me though if you have a simple understanding of the Bible this ought to be pretty easy to pick up really 
All right, so in verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of men that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Well, let's, let's go back to Revelation 1. You see, it's really important... <laughs> To read the first chapter, you know, you, you want, I know people want to flip to the end to find out what happens. But if to have an understanding, to have a true understanding, you got to read it from the beginning. You really do. Okay, so, in Revelation 1, verse 6, it says, And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ has made us kings. And I saw thrones. Well, let's talk about us, Jack. You can't figure that out. We sit on heavenly thrones, not on earthly thrones. The thrones that we sit on are greater than the thrones that they sit on. And has made us kings. We are kings and priests unto God right now. We are a royal priesthood right now. It's amazing. You can't figure that out. We are kings and priests unto God. And they and they and I saw thrones and they sat upon them. It's talking about us. Those of us that are God's people. And judgment was given unto them. So this is what's interesting. This we're talking about John here. In the, the where the, you know the angel showed John. Well, if if you had read the book of John, which you should have done already, in chapter eleven. It says, um, He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right? So the judgment of God has already been given to us that are born of God. Right? Now, you should know that. You read the book of John, right? I highly recommend, if you haven't, the very first chapter. The very first chapter of the book of John. If you've not read any book in the Bible, I recommend starting right here in the book of John. Chapter 1. Alright. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John the Baptist. The same came forth a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light. I'm sorry. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, Jesus, which lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Alright, so the judgment of God has already been given to us that are born of God. 
which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God which were born of God which were born of God verily verily I say unto thee except the man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God except the man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit therefore whoever whosoever is born of God the judgment of God has already been given to them they are sealed secure sanctified saved forever sealed unto the day of redemption <laughs> it's already been determined nothing can take that away and so therefore you see that the importance of teaching eternal security you ought to know man you ought to know that you're saved forever and, and this I mean this is incredible man it's incredible in the world you shall have tribulation right but be of good cheer, I, Jesus, have overcome the world. Right? Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So the judgment of God has already been given to us that are born of, you know, that are saved, that are born of God. It's already been decided, and nothing can take that away. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We have eternal life right now and forever, and nothing can ever change that. Now, this here, this part, this whole thing seems to confuse people is a description of the time that we are in right now. I, I don't know how you could argue against that. Other than the only thing you can do is ignore it. You pretend like it's a big deal, then then you ignore it. This is can only be applied to the time right now. Right? You want to talk about people being beheaded? Well, is that going to happen? in the life to come hereafter no it's only happening now for the witness of Jesus was that happening before Jesus well how can it be happening before Jesus if this is specifically talking about people that are a witness of Jesus being beheaded this is clearly without any doubt speaking of the time period that is happening right now and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years they talking about us that are born of God he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live they talking about us not talking about Jesus reigning a thousand years the scripture is clear Jesus reigns forever can we go back to Exodus 19 or Exodus 15 excuse me I apologize it's Exodus 15 the Lord reign the Lord shall reign forever and ever Wow you mean you know what that means that means Jesus doesn't reign for a thousand years he reigns forever and ever it's amazing it's amazing it really is the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever 
and ever. Not a thousand years, but forever and ever. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns forever. Right? And they shall reign forever and ever. Talking about us that are of God in the resurrection, in the life to come hereafter. All right? And we can go to, uh, you know, Luke, the first chapter of Luke. All right? Or maybe you didn't start off in John. Surely you started, you read Luke 1. No? You haven't even read that one? Well, in Luke chapter 1, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Talking about Jesus. He shall reign forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Yet you say Jesus reigns a thousand years? Yeah, something ain't squaring up, fella. Maybe you haven't gotten that far in the Bible yet. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of, man. You, you got a Bible, you just ain't opened it up yet. You're still working on it. That's the only thing that I can think of. Or you're just a flat-out liar. That's possible, too. If you're teaching anything else than what I'm teaching you here. There's something wrong. Because this is simple, straightforward stuff, man. And they lived and reigned with Christ... Are you saying you don't live and reign with Christ right now? Then you're not saved. <laughs> you're condemning yourself. Really. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. What's the first resurrection? Is it you? No. Nope. It's not me. You can't figure out... <laughs> You can't figure it out, man. You can't figure out, oh, it's the first resurrection. You can't figure out this just simply by reading that. All right, well, let's go back to John 11. Let's see if this clears it up. Verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Oh, I wonder who the first resurrection is. If it's not Jesus, oh, who came before Jesus? Did you? Oh, uh, really? You better straighten this stuff out, man. If you don't know what you're talking about, you're going to be found a liar. All right, I mean, seriously. Proverbs 30, verse 6, and Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. You better get your stuff straight. Are you going to say Jesus is not the first resurrection? I mean, this is not confusing. This is not rocket science, man. This is simple stuff. Plain and simple. That... Even the lowest IQ among us can understand the simplicity of this. Jesus makes it very clear, very simple, very easy to know that he is the resurrection. Verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection <laughs> we that are born of God are partakers of his resurrection he that believeth on me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth me shall never die she saith unto him yeah Lord I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And he has come into this world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay? 
All right, so I mean, this is pretty clear stuff, man. This is not rocket science. You don't need a degree in eschatology. You don't need a doctrine of, uh, you know, uh, scholarship. <laughs> you don't need to be a 19-year-old brat kid with a snotty nose going to college and learning from a professor who don't know what he's talking about anyway. All you need to do is believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. And God will reveal it to you. I mean, this is amazing, man. What do you need, really? Let's go to um, Matthew 16. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. God is the revealer of the, of, of the scripture. All right? And I, just to go back to what I was talking about in the very beginning of the video, the very beginning, in whom the God, God Almighty, of this world blinded the minds of them which believe not. Right? <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It really is. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Man does not take the veil away. God takes the veil away. It's amazing. It really is. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Well, how do you explain that? I mean, you could be dumber than dog do and, and talk for 50 minutes about nothing. That's, but don't you want to know the truth? <laughs> really. I mean, it's right there. You know, when Satan is loosed, that's when we're up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's incredible. It's incredible. It really is. Let's do can we do it this way? And this is the Father's will which has sent me that of all which he has given me I should lose nothing. Right that? goes back to verse 4 and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them Run. all which he has given me I should lose nothing well it's a done deal once you're saved you're saved forever it's illogical to say that you can lose your salvation you can go from saved to unsaved to saved again. That's not in the Bible anywhere. That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. And this goes back to last week when I was talking about yeah, it's a tough, sensitive subject, but even babies need to hear the gospel. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. We have a responsibility to raise our children, to preach them the gospel, to give them the opportunity that was given to us, that we might be saved, to hear the gospel, and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But should raise it up again at the last day. All right? In verse 40, look, 39, 40, 44, 54. It's pretty clear. The last day, I will raise him up at the last day, and I will raise him up at the last day. Whoso eat, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And so, what happens at the last day? We that are born of God we are raised up into the air to meet the Lord in the air 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. In First Thessalonians 4, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And in 1 Corinthians 15, we're talking about the resurrection. People can't figure out the resurrection. I don't get it. I don't know. Am I the first resurrection? Are you the first resurrection? No, the first resurrection is Jesus Christ. I mean, here, what people, some people call, oops, come on, what, seem, what some people call, for whatever reason, uh, the resurrection chapter. And so we got uh, what four mentions? Of one, two, three, four mentions of the resurrection. Okay, so I, I, I don't have a problem with calling this the resurrection chapter at all. The problem is people don't understand it. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Alright, so if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? I mean, we, yeah, yeah, in John 11, he, Jesus plainly says, I am the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, now Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. If he's not the first resurrection, I, who is? It ain't you. I don't care what you say. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He has led the way for us and then when he returns we will be lifted up with him. It's unbelievable. When he returns, he will raise us up at the last day. So he returns at the last day. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Jesus is asked, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And at the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven, and he sends his angels to gather together his elect. And I will raise him up at the last day. And I will raise him up at the last day. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. You can't figure this stuff out. Have you even read the Bible? Seriously, how can you not figure this out? Unless you don't believe the Bible. You've read it. Well, I read it. I just didn't believe it. Now I believe what other men say. And I got this goofy... But doctrine, nobody understands. You don't even understand it by your own words. I saw what you said. It's, um, it's unbelievable. If you don't know the Bible, don't teach it, period. Uh, maybe that'll come back to bite me, because maybe I don't, you know, I don't know everything. Maybe I'll expose myself as a fool, too. I've already done that many times. I know, I get it, I understand. There's always the opportunity for redemption so take it for what it is all right so uh, here in 1st Corinthians 15 for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead he's talking about Adam and he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming, then comes the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign Till he has put all enemies under his feet. This again is prophesied all throughout the Bible. 
All right, in Genesis 3, verse 15, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Remember what I read in Revelation 3, verse 9? Behold, I will make them to come in worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. All right, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up in the air. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. And fire comes down from God and devours them all. Genesis 3, verse 15 it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So when he stomps on the head of the serpent, he will destroy evil forever. All right, 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up. And victory right so there is no more death after this moment in time at the end of the world so that nullifies completely this idea that there's a thousand years of whatever it, I mean, that's not even a hey, you're preaching another religion that's not in the Bible anywhere at all they lived and reigned with Christ. That's not Jesus reigning a thousand years. That's we reigning with Christ during this unique time period when the Lord has come in the flesh and has died, defeated death, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven. This is a very unique time period. And it's over when he comes in the clouds of heaven. That's very simple stuff, man. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power he that believeth in me though we were dead yet shall we live the second death has no power over us that are born of God and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die the second death has no power over us that are born of God and they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years right now we are a kingdom of priests and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests we are called to preach the gospel to every creature right now we are preachers we are kings and priest unto God and has made us kings and priest unto God and you're still scratching your butt trying to figure this out they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and when a thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison so we're up in the air now once we're taken up out of this world and we're up in the air to meet the Lord to meet the Lord in the air now all that's left on the earth are unsaved people outside of the kingdom of God like it was in the Old Testament outside of the king of the nation of God of the children of Israel outside of those borders were nations deceived now we're lifted up taken out of this world and all that's left are nations that will be deceived 
All right, so at the end of the thousand years, we're up in the air, and Satan has now has all the unsaved people to himself on the earth. And he shall go out to deceive the nations. He deceived the unsaved people. He's not talking about saved people. Are you crazy? And shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. This goes back. Um, it's just making a simple um, parallel, what have you, to, uh, or, you know, I'm not sure parallel is the right word, but this stems from Ezekiel 38. To gather them together, the unsaved, to battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Alright, again, in Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So Satan goes out to deceive the nations, to gather the unsaved people at our feet. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. They went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about. Right? And so they compass the camp of the saints about. So maybe you need a little more evidence here. Uh, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, is above. Right? So the holy city of God right now is above. It's not in the Middle East. It's nowhere on earth. It's above. But Jerusalem, that's the holy city. But Jerusalem, which is above is free which is the mother of us all so that beloved city the camp of the saints about in the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them for he must reign for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet so we're up in the air and fire comes down from God it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel and devoured them and the devil that deceived him was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are we just read about that in Revelation 19 it's not a different event it's the same event and it's very clear and it's letting us know this is the same thing it's a different vision given to John to show us things. It's not a different event, it's the same event shown to us from another angle. That's all. And it would be ridiculous, utterly ridiculous to claim that every time the book of Revelation talks about the end of the world, it's a different end of the world. Every time the book of Revelation talks about a judgment, it's a different judgment. It, that would be stupid. And you're, you're willingly being stupid to teach that. There's only one end of the world. There's only one judgment day. There's only one great day of the Lord. It's all the same. You're being stupid on purpose to teach anything else, to believe anything else. I mean, it's ridiculous. The great white throne is the Lord Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, who else? It's not you. From whose face the heaven and the earth fled away, and there's found no place for them. And we can go to uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and, and read about that stuff. We can also go to Second Peter chapter 3, and it plainly says, "The day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. The heavens." shall pass away with a great noise from whose face the heaven fled away you can't draw the parallel a parallel there you can't connect the dots what's the matter with you well if you don't want to believe what the scripture says then you're just not going to get it in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up.
and fire come down from God out of heaven and devoured him. How could you not get this, man? This is the same thing is being told to us over and over and over and over all throughout the Bible. If you can't connect the dots, it might be because you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. It's, simp it's as simple as that, man. You're getting your doctrines from comic books and not from the Bible if you're teaching anything other than what I've taught you here today.